Every year, we spend a small fortune to feed wild birds. But despite our efforts, bird populations have been declining since the 1970s. Loss of quality habitat is one of the main causes for population declines. And when we hang feeders, this can surprisingly make things worse. But our gardens can actually become part of the solution. So here's why just hanging a feeder can cause problems. Many of our gardens, maybe even my own, are what's called sink habitats, where there aren't enough resources to properly support both adult and baby birds. This sadly leads to high death rates for baby birds in the nest. When we hang a feeder, this can create an ecological trap where the environment lures in adult birds by sending them signals that enough resources are available to raise their young, when actually, they aren't. But the good news is we can fix this by transforming our gardens into source habitats where birds can drive. Nope, that's a typo. Where birds can thrive. A great way to start your habitat makeover is by watching how wildlife is already using your garden and to accentuate those features more. Ugh, Stanley. In my own garden, I see a lot of bird activity in the canopy trees behind our house and especially in the shrubs beneath the trees. In a forest setting, this is called edge habitat. And edge habitat is extremely active with birds, so this is a great start. But my edge habitat has a high percentage of non-native plants, like these Norway maples and this forsythia. And this is actually another example of an ecological trap. You see, 96% of North American birds feed their young exclusively on insects. Insects are a critical source of protein and fat for birds and their babies. They actually contain more protein than beef. And baby birds especially need caterpillars. So to create source habitat, our gardens need to be growing lots of insects and especially butterfly and moth caterpillars. And I mean lots of them. To raise one single nest of chickadees to adulthood requires between 6,200 and 9,100 caterpillars. That's to feed one nest. To grow caterpillars, our gardens need to be feeding caterpillars. But most caterpillars can't just eat any old plant. Specific caterpillars need specific host plants. And these non-native plant species in my own yard are not hosts for native caterpillars. So these plants are luring in birds to nest by providing shelter and protection, but they're not providing food for those nesting birds. When it comes to growing caterpillars, mixing in more plants that are native to your region is the best way. Studies show that yards with more native plantings are visited by birds more frequently, have more diversity in bird species, and have more nesting birds and high mortality for baby birds has been observed in yards with fewer than about 70% native plant species. So at least 70% native is what we should be working toward, and you'll be quickly rewarded. I've only just started planting more natives in the past few years, but I immediately got a huge response from both pollinators and birds. Designing gardens around the base of your trees is a great way to reduce your lawn a bit and invite the birds to come bug hunting. I'm building up this new garden that will border a future patio. So I'm going for a garden room effect by adding in more shrubs to give a sense of privacy and enclosure. But you could also keep a more open feel by leaning more towards shade-loving perennials and ground covers. But keep in mind that many birds do need shrubs to nest, so they're a great addition to see a lot of bird action. A woodland garden is also a great place to work in early blooming understory trees and spring ephemerals. Both are critically important for early emerging pollinators in search of a much needed snack after their long hibernation. All of the plants I'm selecting are butterfly and moth caterpillar hosts. So this new garden will provide shelter and nesting sites, but equally important, food for adult and baby pollinators and food for adult and baby birds. It's becoming a real bed and breakfast over here. Ooh, woodpecker. For hot, dry, arid climates, your garden shouldn't look like mine, right? Our gardens should reflect a sense of place, and that will always be a much better fit for bird species in your region. They're expecting to see the plants that they're adapted to, so the best way to attract them is to mimic their natural homes. This might require you to learn more about your local plants and ecosystems, but arid climates have truly stunning natural landscapes you can borrow design ideas from. Hot sun in my own yard in Maryland looks a bit different from the south and west, but it's where I see the most bluebird activity. Bluebirds prefer wide open spaces. They have amazing vision, and I'll often see them just sitting staring at the ground. They're actually hunting for bugs, and when they see one, they'll swoop down to the grass to grab it. Even adult bluebirds live mostly off insects during the summer, so we won't see bluebirds unless we're growing lots of bugs. So again, I'm leaning into what the birds want and planning some swaths of naturalistic style prairie gardens. And naturalistic doesn't have to mean messy. Grouped plantings of the same species and choosing plants that have consistent heights are both great ways to make a naturalistic planting feel planned and organized. And carving out some paths and landing pads of turf will encourage more human activity in your garden. Let's not forget humans are animals too. If you have a naturally wet area, Embrace that. Water is one of the best ways to attract birds, so don't fight it. Make sure to direct water away from any buildings as needed. 
but then you can create a rain garden or even a pond depending on how wet the area is. There are so many water-loving plants that birds and pollinators rely on. Things like birches, native willows, buttonbush, queen of the prairie, check her out. Cardinal flower, joe pieweed, some species have milkweed, native lilies, the list goes on and on. You can make a stunning space and wildlife will flock to it. Even if it's more like a vernal pool that's wet in the spring but gets dry over the summer, there are lots of plant species that are accustomed to that. And a plus is, vernal pools won't have fish, so these areas will attract frogs who will eat your mosquitoes. And speaking of, we can't be using insecticides if we want to support bird populations. Insecticides kill and keep away insect predators, but these predators are nature's checks and balances. It might feel contradictory, but we need to let bugs be there in order to invite in the predators that will actually do the real pest management. No matter where you live, you can take cues from the natural spaces in your region, and I guarantee you there's a bird who would love to visit you. Selecting plants that do double duty to feed both adult and baby birds is the key. And I've started a series on that very topic. Watch this video next to learn more.